our smartphones are really life-changing devices in many ways. But the most interesting part is that touching by tapping, swiping, pinching, zooming, double tapping becomes really common to us because it feels really natural how we can control our devices and it feels really intuitive how we can interact with the displayed content. So looking into the future, the question is, what will be next? I believe that the next communication device we will have, we will wear on our heads with the displays right in front of our eyes. Not really like this, also some people do that already today, but something more like this, a kind of pair of glasses with integrated displays and speakers and a microphone. The question now is, how will we control such a device? And how will we interact with the displayed content right in front of our eyes? I mean, touching seems no option anymore. And using our voices and making gestures with our hands could be really difficult for the system to recognize and maybe uh, being annoying uh, the people around us. So my suggestion is to use our eyes for and I will give you three reasons why eye tracking or eye movements could be better in that case instead of using our hands or voices. So the first reason is everybody can move his eyes. It doesn't matter whether you are a child or adult or grown up. Even motor impaired people who can't often move their hands or use their voices still can move their eyes. Second thing is, it's the best thing, it does not require any training. We don't have to learn how to look 20 degrees to the right and two degrees up. We just do it. And the third thing is, we don't have to translate it into a language that the computer understands like a spoken language. Because eye movements itself are the same all over the world. Now, eye tracking is not a really new thing. It's already been used in modern devices. But when we want to use our eyes actively to control something actively, like moving the cursor over a screen and then touch something, then we are facing a problem. And this problem is called the meter's touch. Now, meter's is a king from the Greek mythology. And one day he got a wish for free. And he wished that everything he will touch will turn right into gold. And his wish came true, and everything he touched turned right into gold. The floor, the carpet, the tables, the dishes. Unfortunately, everything he wants to eat and to drink, and unluckily, his lovely daughter. And that was the problem, because not everything he touched should have turned into gold. And that means when we move the cursor over the screen and we want to touch, we will do that all the time, even if we don't want that. So the question is, how can we overcome this meters touch problem to use our eyes actively? Now, when I started to find a research topic for my PhD in human computer interfaces, I first started with brain waves and brain computing interfaces because I thought, wow, that's the way we are going to interact in the future and to control devices like driving cars or creating funny slides for a TED talk only by the way of thinking. But it turned out that is not really easy. And one major reason is that when we put sensors on the head and we want to get the real raw brain activities, we also get a huge amount of different signals too, like radio waves and Wi-Fi signal and power frequencies from the outside. And a lot of our body signals like heartbeat and muscle movements from our face and necks and shoulders and eye movements. Usually the brain computing interfaces try to filter out all these kinds of artifacts. But I was wondering and asking myself, why can't we use one of those artifacts to control something? And I went through all these kinds of signals 
And I excluded all the external signals because they are not always present and you can't rely on them. And then I went through the body signals and what should I say, um, activating an app by heartbeat is really hard. And to be honest, I was not really interested in muscle movements, so I ended up with the eyes. And the eyes and our brain is all we need to do a brainwave-based eye tracking system, which allows us to overcome this meter's touch problem. And for that, we have to do three steps. The first step is, of course, we have to detect the eye position by calculating the viewing angles of our view. And the very first test I did was, um, I was looking to the very, very right. This is the maximum we can do. And if, if you want to do, do it right now, look to the very, very right as far as you can till it hurts a little bit. And then to the left side, these are 45 degrees. And I did this a couple of times just to get some records. And then I put the data into the computer and did some filtering and analyzing. And then I visualized the result. And here it is. And that is not really complicated. The only thing you have to know is then that when you're looking to the right, the peak on the right brain side goes up and on the left side down. And guess what? When we look to the left side, it is the other way around. That's amazing because with that, we already can trigger something. We can toggle something like switching on or off our display or switch on and off the music. Because of the meter's touch problem, I want to say to you that this viewing angle is not really common. So when you do that, you do, that, you do that actively, and that's enough to trigger something and to activate something. So the next step was to refine the viewing angles by each 10 degrees. And in that case, we asked some students to help us, and uh, we asked them to look from 0 to 10, and from 0 to 20, and then to 30 and 40, and back again, and to the right side and left side, and we did it a couple of times, and then we did all this computer stuff, and here is one of the results. So as you can see, there are some nicely steps increasing by each 10 degrees and decreasing by each 10 degrees. And with that, we are already able to increase our brightness from our screen in a few steps or decrease the volume in a few steps. And then we did the same thing in steps of five degrees. And the result is really amazing. Looks like a drawing, right? And I think you don't have to be a scientist to understand that we can do a lot of more with that. We can smoothly increase the brightness of our screen or smoothly decrease the volume of our music. And because of the meter's touch problem, the viewing angles from zero up to, let's say, 40 degrees are common viewing modus. So when we do that, we, we do that all the time. We do that not consciously. So we need another help as a trigger to activate something. And for that, we have two more steps. So the second step is we have a look on the alpha, beta, and gamma waves. That means we just take our signal and split it up into different frequency bands called alpha, beta, and gamma. And then we have a look where's the most power and where's the more, most activity. So for example, when there's a lot of activity in the alpha band, then you're sleepy and your eyes are closed. And when there's a lot of activity and power in the beta waves, then it's just like now, sitting around, awake, watching TED talk or reading something. And when there's a lot of activity in the gamma band, then you're highly concentrated, like learning something or doing meditation. So with that, we can detect whether your eyes are open or not, whether you're paying attention or not, and whether you are highly concentrated or not. And the last step we do is we have a look on active and non-active brain regions. That means, for example, when you just look into a light, you 
back part of your brain is active. When you start to recognize something, your middle part and side part are active. And when you start to remembering something, like the name of a person, then your front part is active. And some special peaks occur all the time. You got some over there, some negative and positive peaks. But the most interesting peak is P300. I call it the expectation peak. And this peak will occur when your expectation comes true. So for example, when you're looking for an app icon on your smartphone, and you know how the app icon looks like, and you're searching for that, when then the app icon appears, P300 in a positive way after 300 milliseconds will occur because your expectation to find that app icon comes true. And that is the trigger we need to touch something at the end. So all these three steps together allows us to create a brainwave-based eye-tracking technology which might be able to overcome this meter's touch problem when we want to actively control something by our eyes. I will give you an example. So imagine you're staying here right on stage, having a TED talk, and you wear one of such nice modern devices, when suddenly a message came in. And you, of course, you don't have time to answer it right now, and you just want to hide the message. So all you have to do is to look upon that message. And the system will recognize your eye movements, get your eye position, moves the invisible cursor upon the message, checks your alpha, beta, gamma waves. Yes, you're awake, your eyes are open, you are awake, you're concentrated, checks the brain region. Yes, you're recognizing that message. And then the peak will occur, and this peak hits the message and lets the message disappear. So besides all this researching and theoretical stuff, we try to build some prototypes. Also, we have less time. But I just want to show you that that is not really much you need. You just need really uh, less hardware, which is less power consuming, consuming. And it's really easy to integrate in already existing head-mounted devices, like a pair of glasses or sports bands. And I, I just want to give you two more examples what we might be able to do today. So the first example is, let's integrate some electrodes into acoustic noise cancelling headphones. I always use them when I'm traveling by train. And when the ticket guy shows up, I have to touch my headphones to switch them off. Now, with this kind of technology, it might be able just to look at the guy. The system will do all the stuff. And in combination with the sound source location of the microphones, it should be able that the voice comes through automatically. And then I can talk to the ticket guy. I can show him the ticket on my mobile phone. And when I'm finished, I just have to look away. And then I can continue to listening to the music. And the second example will be to put some electrodes into helmets for motorcyclists or Formula One drive or pilots just to observe their attention. And when the user gets tired or gets into dangerous situations, then we can display him an alert into, onto an integrated display. And then again, we can use this kind of technology to verify if he has recognized this message or not. And if not, then we can do an additional sound or something like that. So what's next? Well, I still believe that brain computing interfaces is the way we are going to use in the future and to control our devices in the future. But brainwave-based eye tracking could help much more to build up really good devices for everyone, uh, which everyone can use in the same way all over the world. And it will be a really realistic and natural and intuitive way to control such device. Thank you.